In this video, I am going to talk about how to make uh, a career transition from being a SaaS programmer to a SaaS predictive analyst or data scientist. Before I talk about how to make a career transition, um, I would like to put a couple of points um, regarding the day-to-day -day activities of a SaaS programmer and a predictive analyst and what, uh, what are the basic differences. Um, as a SaaS programmer, you work on report development, you work on data management, model management. Uh, as, as an analyst, uh, generally uh, we work on uh, building predictive models, uh, model validation, we work on model validation and monitoring. We do SaaS optimizations um, and we also are very closely involved with business strategy making. Now, um, when I say uh, SaaS programming, I'm not saying that um, a SaaS programmer only does SaaS programming. He is not involved in, uh, in, the, in the business aspects or in the domain aspects or the functional aspect of the work. And they do not do any analysis. Well, they do and do analysis. What I have seen from other SaaS programmers, um, the SaaS programmer work is primarily 90% programming and 10% um, analysis. Um, I was I was a programmer at one point of time, so that's what my experience has been. It could be uh, different though, so I could be uh, proved wrong. But as an analyst, 70% of work will be doing analysis, and 30% or 40% will be doing programming. Okay, so that's the basic difference between the two different roles. So why should one uh, do? Uh, why why should one uh, do a career transition? what what are the incentives and uh, to me i think incentives should not be the first thing that should come in your mind um if somebody is happy with uh, saas programming uh, and he wants to continue with that there's absolutely no reason why he should uh, make a career shift uh, or, or do a transition i wouldn't say it's a career uh, shift because it's not a totally different career it's just that uh, somebody wants to learn more things um, about about SaaS analytics and uh, move up the uh, analytics value chain. So when I say move moving up the uh, analytics value chain, I'll explain it uh, a bit more uh, in detail way in the next slide. So uh, if if you um, are already bored of writing SaaS codes for a very long time, uh, you can try out learning statistical programming. So that will be a new thing and will be more exciting for you. And that will add a lot of values to your uh, career profile. The next reason could be if you want to solve business problems. Um, as an analyst, you will be solving more business problem than um, as a programmer. That's what I believe. Again, I could be proved wrong. Uh, if you want to learn high-end statistical modeling, if that's what you want to learn, if you are from, uh, you know, good at mathematics or you're good at statistics or you are some part of time good at these two areas, um, so this is one field for you. Okay, um, you are fond of mathematics or statistics in your high school. You can uh, learn all these things again, and you know um, you can be very productive. And uh, the last point is, if you want broader career options, when I say broader career options, I'll explain it in detail in the next slide. Um, the career options will be uh, much more. Um, uh, if if you if you learn predictive analytics um, and you already are familiar with SaaS programming, so you are already an expert in SaaS programming, and now you know a bit of predictive modeling, so the options will be much uh, more. So I was talking about the analytics value chain. So by learning predictive analytics, you actually move up in the analytics value chain. Um, and let me explain it in a bit more detail. Analytics value chain is um, perceived to be start uh, starting from reporting and then the next uh, in the value chain is ad hoc reporting which involves uh, more dynamic reports and business intelligence and then descriptive analysis or descriptive analytics. So descriptive analytics is about doing analytics on uh, historical data uh, to get to know what has happened to find out uh, relationship between variables without worrying about what is going to happen in future. 
that's about descriptive analysis predictive analytics is about extrapolating the historical uh, the pattern in the historical data to the future or in in other words we do forecasting or we forecast the future we try to know what is going to happen in future so in descriptive analysis we uh, say what has happened in past in predictive analytics we want uh, we want to know what is going to happen the uh, last stage of analytics value chain is the optimization analytics where we try to know uh, given the fact that we know what is going to happen uh, what should we do now what is the optimum way of doing things optimal way of doing things rather so that's where the operation research techniques come into uh, picture um, so the analytics value chain starts with reporting then ad hoc reporting descriptive analysis predictive analytics and then optimization analysis. Now, whether the uh, complexity or the difficulties in terms of using techniques goes up with uh, you know different uh, uh, steps, I believe that you know the complexity actually goes up with, uh, with the steps. Like the reporting could be uh, the simplest techniques, and optimization is the most difficult one. Um, although uh, I could be proved wrong by many people. So, what should be the learning path? Um, well. This is my uh, own opinion. It could be uh, different. Somebody else could uh, suggest to something else. But uh, I'm, I'm just uh, telling you what uh, I have followed and what I have seen uh, many other people follow. Uh, start with basic statistics like learning mean, median, correlation, probability, uh, distribution. And then brush up your uh, high school mathematics. Uh, if you have forgotten uh, matrix algebra, probability theory, or Cartesian geometry, or differentiation integration just learn a bit of it may not be in detail but yeah definitely uh, the basics start with the basic modeling techniques say regression logistic regression discriminant analysis clustering and be thorough with the fundamentals uh, so ensure that you understand the theory uh, well but sometimes what happens is that you may not be very comfortable with the theory given the fact that uh, sometimes uh, you know some of these techniques involve um, a detailed mathematical derivation so don't worry about it if you don't understand if you understand it is it's well enough if you don't then don't worry move on and just know the applications that's very important use SAS to practice the basic modeling techniques so do as many examples or case studies as possible doing the case studies you will learn more than learning the theory Learn the domain specific modeling techniques once you are familiar with the basic techniques. Learn the domain specific modeling techniques like uh, credit risk uh, analysis, like you know, uh, how to build a credit scorecard, how to do marketing analytics, how to do operation analytics, uh, like uh, demand forecasting or inventory optimization, um, how to do customer targeting modeling, uh, you know, how to uh, build a credit uh, scorecard models. So these are the things that you, you should learn once you are familiar with the basic techniques like regression and logistic regression and clustering and so on and so forth. So uh, <coughs> that's the learning path and um, uh, you can, you can uh, use online resources for, uh, for all this. So what are the online sources? Um, UCLA website is the uh, one of the best site for SAS analytics. So you just have to Google, um, you know, the technique and the plus SAS and then uh, UCLA and then it, it will find the page for you for whatever technique you want to learn. You can find it on the UCLA site. Just do a Google search and you'll get to know. Use SAS documentation. I'm not a big fan of SAS documentation, but if you're familiar with the basic techniques, you're familiar with uh, uh, the basics of uh, SAS analytics, uh, the predictive analytics, um, then you should actually... Um, Follow the SAS documentation. For beginners, it's uh, you know a bit confusing and not so easy. So uh, as a beginner, you should not start with SAS documentation. Start with UCLA uh, website. Uh, and to me, I think the best one is the Analytics University. Um, the, this YouTube channel where you are watching this uh, in this video. So do subscribe. And uh, I have uh, uploaded over um, 200 videos, in fact 220 videos till date. So out of these 220 videos, I have uh, uh, you know more than 100 videos on uh, predictive analytics using SAS. So go through the uh, different playlists, uh, you know, 
start, uh, start with uh, um, the uh, uh, exploratory data analysis uh, data analysis and uh, learn regression regression playlist learn from logistic regression playlist and also do the case studies i have a playlist on case study well. if you want to learn to prepare for the interview i have a playlist on interview preparation as well so do check that playlist as well to learn mathematics concept you can uh, visit the uh, world from math world so that's one good source resource for uh, learning the basics of mathematics there are a couple of myths that i have come across uh, i have listened to a lot of people um, so just want to clarify just want to uh, give my opinion on this i could be proved wrong so many other people will have different op opinions on this matters so a lot of people say that late career shift is difficult impossible and not rewarding um, it's difficult like any other career shift um, and not very rewarding sometimes but it's definitely not impossible it's definitely possible and um, if you're doing it um, uh, now it's definitely rewarding um, because i have also done a career shift from uh, being a programmer to an analyst and um, it's it's pretty rewarding financially and the second myth is learning modeling concept is very difficult yes it's difficult to some extent but you do not have to be an expert in theory you do not understand uh, how the derivation happen in OLS or MLE at some like loop uh, if you know how to use these techniques that's uh, good enough a lot of people in the industry with uh, a significant number of experience level they don't understand the theory properly uh, or they are not very comfortable with that but they are amazing at applying this uh, con um, you know the concept and you know uh, do the uh, predictive analytics work and um, they are very good at it so learning the theory is always useful so um, but if, if you are not very familiar with that if you are not very comfortable with that uh, move on and learn the applications uh, it should be fine another myth is uh, the salary in collective analytics is very high and uh, very tempting so that's uh, the that should be the main motivation for a career shift um, i am not a big fan of this statement uh, although it's very tempting it's very good but i would still suggest that uh, one should not do a career shift just because uh, the pays are uh, you know people pay uh, premium um, so that should not be the main motivation and some people say that you know you need relevant experience before you know getting a job in uh, um, in, in predictive analytics um, so if you're a programmer and if you know a bit of uh, you know analytics uh, you will get plenty of um, career choices so i have come across one career choice uh, like programmer come and list okay come and list so these are roles where somebody with sound programming knowledge and he understand the models he may not be an expert or he may not have a uh, good experience in uh, analyt uh, in, in doing analytics um, he will fit into this kind of a role where uh, he is expected to understand the model output the uh, different aspects of model and he he is good at programming so um, that role will be very suitable and later on he can be uh, a hardcore programmer after having some experience uh, at this role these uh, opinions are of my own so people may have a different opinions um, so if you like my opinions if you like this video do subscribe to this channel and uh, learn analytics learn predictive modeling learn data um, science whatever you call it it's all same for me and uh, be happy thank you